tonight as the number of people infected continues to grow. We're breaking down what you need to know about the coronavirus. Some are saying the new process of magistrating people twice is causing unnecessary confusion. And there's a temperature roller coaster in the forecast. Meteorologist Sarah Spivey is here with a look in just a few minutes. Thanks for joining us for KSAT News at 9. I'm Myra Arthur. If you've watched the show the last couple of days, you've noticed we've been bouncing around when it comes to location. That's because our set in the newsroom is under construction. Well, we're back in the newsroom tonight as that facelift continues. So as they say, please pardon our dust. Let's get started. Today, the World Health Organization officially declared the coronavirus a public health emergency. That allows countries to decide whether to close their borders, cancel flights, screen people arriving at airports, or take other measures. The number of cases and the number of people who have died continues to grow in China where this virus originated. Now, right now here in the U.S., there are five confirmed cases. That's what we know, but there was still a lot that people don't know. So we wanted to get you the answers to make sure as this virus spreads, so do the facts. The latest numbers, more than 8,000 cases of the Wuhan coronavirus confirmed in mainland China, and 213 people there have died from it. A coronavirus is actually a family of viruses. And they're called coronaviruses because when you look at them under the microscope, mm -hmm. they have little spikes coming out of the edges, uh, which looks sort of like a crown or a corona or the sun's corona. You've heard of the MERS and SARS viruses. Those are types of coronaviruses. This one currently spreading in China hasn't been recognized before. The current thinking is that it was a virus that was typically in animals, uh, maybe bats, maybe some other animals, and that it jumped to humans. So it has never before been seen in humans. Health officials believe the animal to human transmission likely happened at a market in Wuhan, China, where live animals were being sold. So what are the symptoms? Think flu. Starting at the mild end, they can be sneezing, coughing, fever, aches, and then as you get down towards the more extreme end, you're getting, uh, you're feeling like you have pneumonia, um, difficulty breathing. The virus spreads through droplets, often someone sneezing or coughing and someone else breathing in those droplets. Similar to the flu, people with a weakened immune system, especially older people, are most at risk. The Washington Post reports that work on a vaccine for the coronavirus is underway. That work being done in Boston, San Diego, and Houston. Five cases have been confirmed in the U.S. People in the United States are in no imminent danger whatsoever. You don't need to walk around wearing a mask. You don't need to be worried about that other person in the bus or on the subway with you. You need to wash your hands. You need to take the kinds of precautions you take with the flu. Don't go to work if you're sick. You need to be aware. Things can change, and they can change quickly. Here in the U.S., the CDC is screening patients for the coronavirus at 20 major airports, and that includes George Bush Intercontinental in Houston. Meantime, the San Antonio International Airport is hoping to see some big changes to help deal with what they say is a growing demand. The airport began a strategic development plan in 2018 to determine if the airport could accommodate expansion needs. Last year, they say the number of passengers increased to over 10 million. The plan will determine if additional runways, terminal space, and parking is needed. Today, people who live near the airport got a chance to voice their opinions. Some were left feeling frustrated and confused over the proposed changes. I wanted to kind of clarify what was their intention, what's going to happen to our neighborhood, traffic's going to change. The whole, our whole way of life in that area is going to change. The airport says plans are still in the early stages. They could change. They hope to have these plans finalized sometime this year. Many people charged with crimes in Bear County are now being magistrated twice, first by a city magistrate and then by a county one. It's a new system that some say is causing an unnecessary duplication of services. This issue came to light this week after the arrest of Logan Harville, who's accused of injuring a child who later died. He was taken into custody by San Antonio police, then seen by a city magistrate. They set his bond at a million dollars. Then he was transferred to the Bear County Jail and seen by a county magistrate who set his bond at $150,000.
It's confusing to arrestees. When arrestees are magistrated twice, they have no idea why or how, when to show up to court. The bond that's being applied to Harville is the county bond. KSAT reached out to a municipal court administrator for comment on this. He said via email that he also did not understand the necessity of magistrating a person twice, but declined to release an official statement. A man wanted for beating his own mother to death is now in police custody. Flooding has turned deadly in Brazil and an illustration of just how fast the wildfires in Australia are charring that landscape. Here's tonight's nine at nine. Less than 24 hours after police put out information about a wanted man accused of brutally beating his mom to death, they managed to track him down. Michael Kerbo was arrested last night. He's been charged with murder. Heavy rain and flooding have swept through southeastern Brazil, claiming the lives of at least 55 people. More than 100 cities under a state of emergency. Thousands have been forced from their homes and some people are still missing. Years of sexual abuse, decades after former Harris County Constable Jack Thomas Hagee allegedly sexually assaulted an underage girl, he is now facing charges. The 74-year-old is the brother of San Antonio pastor John Hagee of Cornerstone Church. According to court documents, Jack Hagee's accuser, now a 38-year-old woman, claims the assaults lasted from the time she was four or five years old until she was 13. In a statement, a spokesman from Cornerstone Church said in part that since Pastor Hagee was made aware of the situation, he and his wife have offered full support to the victim. The punishment phase in the trial of Anton Harris began today. Harris is charged with a series of rapes and robberies that had people living in the medical center in fear five years ago. He was found guilty in one case yesterday. Prosecutors tell me they plan to call at least 20 witnesses. The defense, too, plans to call witnesses. Given that, I doubt we'll have a punishment verdict before next week. Video shows a bushfire turn an Australian countryside from this to this in less than four minutes. Fire crews can be seen bracing for a fast-moving fire being fueled by strong winds. Those fire crews at the scene were safe and were able to protect the surrounding property. A Maryland police officer is now facing a murder charge. Prince George County officer Michael Owen is accused of fatally shooting a suspect who was handcuffed and seat belted in a police cruiser. Obviously he did not resist arrest because you had him in handcuffs. You placed him in there. His life matters. The officer allegedly shot William Green seven times. This was the third shooting in Officer Owen's decade long career and the second in which he killed a suspect. A North Carolina school is closed because so many people there are sick. The Durham High School decided to cancel classes since about 20% of its students are staying home. Some teachers are also out. In all, about 100 people at the school have fallen ill. A few of them have confirmed flu cases, but it's not known if that's what most of the students and teachers are infected with. A massive sinkhole opens up at a mobile home park near Tallahassee, Florida. One neighbor there described hearing a loud sound and seeing the ground suddenly swallow up trees and her neighbor's porch. Luckily, no one was home at the time. A Kansas man calls police after finding a boa constrictor in his couch. The deputy fire chief was able to get the snake. The animal is now at a pet shop. We still don't know how the estimated six to eight foot long boa ended up in that couch. To read more about these nine stories, go to ksat.com. Well, it was a chilly day across the Alamo City, and unfortunately, uh, temperatures really only stayed in the 40s for most of the day, but it's not all bad news. In today's pollen count, Mountain Cedar is very low, the lowest it's been in a while, only at 20. Mold is low as well. I just want to remind you, too, that Mountain Cedar season will be coming to a close very shortly here. It peaks in mid-January and ends around Valentine's Day. And as we head into February, we'll start to see mountain cedar slowly go away. I'm not saying that it can't be higher than what the count is today, but we are starting to get to the tail end of mountain cedar season. Here's today's drought monitor. New drought monitor came out today, and you can see that severe drought is in the southeastern portion of Bear County. Most of us in Bear County dealing with a moderate 
drought at the moment with abnormally dry conditions out in the hill country. But it's really our friends to the west out near Del Rio, Yavaldi, La Prior, and down toward Eagle Pass that are struggling with extreme drought. So we really could use a good drink of water, but we just didn't see much, if any, rain today. Just a few driz uh, drops of drizzle and sprinkles out there, cloudy skies, and the high today was only 52 degrees. That is 12 degrees below average, and we've had many days here where we've been well above average, so it was a nice change to see a cool day. No rain recorded at the airport. Taking a look at the radar image right now, again, a couple of sprinkles out there throughout the rest of the evening. But other than that, it's just going to stay cloudy all because of a low pressure system over West Texas. Now that is getting closer and closer to San Antonio, and as it moves to the east of San Antonio, we're going to start to see clearing skies here. And so as we take you through the future cast overnight tonight, cloudy skies, maybe a couple of sprinkles tomorrow will stay cloudy through about the lunch hour. Then afternoon we will be able to clear out and see sunny skies and it'll actually be a pretty nice afternoon. Taking a look at the numbers, waking up at 42, cloudy and chilly, gradually clearing skies, 54 right around lunch, and we'll be looking at pleasant conditions uh, in the afternoon, 60 degrees, mostly clear skies right around 50 in the evening with a wind from the northwest at 5 to 10 miles per hour. We talked about the temperature roller coaster. Here it is. Today we were in the 50s. Over the weekend, we'll be right around in the 60s, and then by early next week, we'll be in the 70s but close to 80 degrees by Tuesday. Then we get a front moving through. Temperatures will plummet and we'll be back into the 50s by the middle of the uh, week next week. Here's a look at the seven day forecast. Groundhog Day where Punxsutawney Phil decides if it's going to stay winter or spring. It'll be warm around San Antonio over the next couple of days with temperatures climbing to 77 in the afternoon. Then we'll have a small chance for isolated rain on Wednesday once that front moves through. Temperatures in the 50s. The San Antonio City Council has approved the purchase of a mobile shower trailer to help with homeless outreach. Over the last few months, the city was using a borrowed shower unit for a pilot program. It provided 404 people with more than 1,400 showers between July and December. The city will be able to use its new trailer for community emergencies, events, or homeless encampments. District 10 City Councilman Clayton Perry was the lone vote against buying this trailer. He said he was supportive of nonprofits buying that kind of equipment, but not the city. You're watching KSAT News at 9. We'll be back in just one minute.
In Washington, day nine of the impeachment trial of President Donald Trump taking place. Today, Democrats continue to take aim at the president's legal team's defense, as spelled out by his attorney, Alan Dershowitz, this week. And if a president does something which he believes will help him get elected in the public interest, that cannot be the kind of quid pro quo that results in impeachment. The only reason you make that argument is because you know your client is guilty. A vote on whether the Senate will seek witnesses is expected to happen tomorrow. If that vote fails, the trial is likely to head to a quick acquittal. Just a reminder, if you haven't registered to vote yet in the March primary, you're running out of time. Monday is the last day you can register for that election, and the Bear County Elections Office is offering extended hours this weekend to make it happen. They're open 10 a.m. to 4 p.m. on Saturday and from noon to 4 p.m. on Sunday. Then on Monday, they're open from 8 a.m. to 7 p.m. Early voting begins February 18th. Election Day is then on March 3rd. And KSAT News at 9 is helping you keep up with all of what's happening in the big 2020 elections this year. Our Vote 2020 newsletter launched this month and we'll have a new edition every Tuesday this year. You can still sign up for it. Just go to KSAT.com slash newsletters. Turning to tonight's top stories, a Connecticut man accused of killing his estranged wife dies by suicide. Fotis Dulos was found unresponsive in his garage on Tuesday. He was sent to the hospital and treated for carbon monoxide poisoning. He died this evening. Jennifer Dulos has not been seen since May. She disappeared amid a contentious custody battle. Her body has never been found. Twitter and Pinterest rolling out some new efforts to root out voting misinformation ahead of the November elections. Twitter has created a new tool to make it easier for users to report tweets that broadcast false information about registering to vote or casting a ballot. And Pinterest says it will remove posts that mislead people about when, how and where they can vote. It is one of the last symbols in San Antonio of the golden age for grand movie palaces. The Alameda Theater has stood on Houston Street for decades. In this week's Throwback Thursday, RJ Marcus tells us about the theater's history and its future and how it gave a voice to generations of performers. The Alameda Theater in downtown San Antonio opened in March of 1949. It was the largest movie palace ever dedicated to Spanish language films and the performing arts. It was the Latino theater of San Antonio. It was the place where, where Latino artists could, could uh, actually show their movies. The Mexican film Revancha was the opening movie. Singing cowboy Gene Autry was a surprise guest and sang a popular ballad in Spanish. Major artists from throughout the U.S., Spain, Mexico, and other Latin American countries performed there. Unlike many theaters at the time, the Alameda catered to a Spanish-speaking audience and offered desegregated seating. I think that is a, an amazing, amazing history to show that this is the kind of place that you know, really represents uh, San Antonio and its, its, its amazing history. It's a compassionate city um, and embraces you know, the, the, the beauty uh, of, of very, very significant artists in, 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 in their time. Some of Mexico's cultural icons, such as Lola Beltran, Agustin Lara, Pedro Infante, and Cantinflas performed at the Alameda. The stage could even accommodate performers on horseback, such as Antonio Aguilar, who would ride out toward the audience. Not only was it, uh, did it showcase some amazing talent, it, the, the, the theater itself is a great representation of architecture that, uh, that also speaks to that, that history and in, in, you know, embracing um, you know, the beauty that is within, within inside those walls. That beauty can still be seen in the interior finishes. Most of the inside is original to the 1949 date of construction. That includes large murals, statues, floral designs, mirror glass finishes, and a unique lighting system. The Alameda Theater has been a shining light for the Latino arts community for decades. It's currently under renovations, but once that's complete, it will be a multimedia arts and life performing center for everyone to enjoy. The goal to create new memories while connecting the theater's past to the present.
They can talk about the, the time they went with, with their parents, the time they went with friends uh, to, to enjoy uh, an amazing event, an amazing movie, a performance. And uh, I think this is exactly the kind of thing that, that we are uh, setting the table for. We're, we're getting ready to, to uh, begin a new chapter in, in the life of the Alameda. For the Nine, RJ Marquez. Throwback Thursday, just one of the series that we feature exclusively here on the News at 9. Tune in tomorrow night for a look back at the week's biggest stories in the week in 210. Let's go to our website now to find out what is trending tonight on KSAT.com with Ferris Sabawi. Myra, so many uh, great stories on KSAT.com. We're going to start right here in San Antonio at the zoo. Ah, yeah. Okay. Um, as you know, uh, one of the easiest ways to find out who's going to win the Super Bowl is uh, just find any animal. Just ask a zoo animal. Yeah. Tis the season there's for them something, to make their predictions. There's something they know that we don't about sports, and they're just so <laughs> smart. And they seem to always be right. I don't know what it is, but they're always so right. I'm so, so glad right. we have them as a resource for these types oh, of things. Oh, absolutely. So yeah. the San Antonio Zoo uh, uh, picked the lioness to pick between the Kansas City Chiefs and the San Francisco 49ers. Okay, and drum roll. Uh, by knocking down the box with the 49ers on it, she chose the Kansas City Chiefs to win it all. Ah, yeah. Okay. So if know. you want, get Vegas on the phone, make <laughs> this bet. It's a sure thing. You can't lose. There's no way. Done. It's done. Absolutely. <laughs> um, all right. What do we have next up tonight? So, uh, you know, Valentine's Day is coming up, and maybe this isn't everyone's most preferred method, uh, me most preferred way to spend this romantic holiday, but uh, <laughs> Waffle House has un unveiled its Love at First Bite promotion. Okay, and Waffle House is taking reservations. Yeah, yeah, it's, it's, very, it's very exclusive, very swanky, just a nice little candlelit uh, okay. Waffle House dinner wow. uh, or breakfast. Never you know, thought obviously. I would say Waffle House is taking reservations, but here yeah. we are. They're very exclusive these days. Uh, it's especially for Valentine's Day. Now, unfortunately, the closest one to us is in Austin, so you may have to make a whole trip out of it. Um, but I mean, for Waffle House, I, I would. But there's a good story somewhere of like a couple that met at a Waffle yeah, House. Yeah, there or must something. be. There must be. Th this is for you. Yeah, this is definitely. Uh, yeah, if Waffle House is one of the things you bond over, this could be great. If it's <laughs> not, then maybe, maybe go somewhere else. Something for everybody. Yeah, and our last story of the day, uh, Myra, as we all know too well, the Cowboys won't be at the Super Bowl, mm -hmm. but Jerry Jones will be. And he showed up to Miami yesterday in his 357-foot uh, yacht. Yeah, it's not exactly Jerry Jones being in Miami that everyone's talking about. Right. It's his yacht. His yacht is almost the length of a football field, they said. Appropriately. It's $250 million. Um, wow. And definitely much bigger than, than uh, I think, any place we've seen. It looks incredible. <laughs> That's amazing. Yeah, um, so it's there. You can actually see it from Bayfront Park. If you're over there for the Super Bowl events, you'll see it docked there. Um, it has a bunch of things, including its own pool. So it's uh, it's really it's a swanky thing, and it's a, probably the best way to travel. It should have a lot of things for 250 million. Yeah, and uh, this writer Jeff Tavs uh, uh, did take a little sneak diss at Jerry Jones at the end. He said, you know, while it does have all these great things, one thing it doesn't have is a Lombardi Trophy younger than 25 years old. So that one hurts as a Cowboys fan. Burn. But it's, I mean, it's true. So we got to go with it. <laughs> but it's been it, uh, all those stories and more at KSAT.com. All right, thanks, Ferris. We'll be right back.
That's all our time here on KSAT News at 9. Thanks so much for watching. I'm Myra Arthur. We'll see you right back here tomorrow. Good night.